The shoulder complex consists of the glenohumeral, acromioclavicular, and sternoclavicular joints, and also the scapulothoracic surfaces. The glenohumeral is a synovial ball and socket joint, forming the articulation between the head of the humerus and the shallow glenoid cavity of the scapula. It is supported by the glenohumeral and coracohumeral ligaments. It derives intrinsic muscular support from the rotator cuff muscles and further support from deltoid, biceps, pectoralis major, and latissimus dorsi. It is innervated by the axillary and suprascapular nerves. The acromioclavicular joint is a synovial plane joint formed by the acromion of the scapula and the lateral aspect of the clavicle. It has a capsule, a synovial membrane, and an intraarticular disc. It is reinforced by the superior and inferior acromioclavicular ligaments. It is innervated by the suprascapular nerve. The sternoclavicular joint is also a synovial double plane joint formed between the sternum and the medial aspect of the clavicle. It contains an intraarticular disc. It is reinforced by the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular ligaments and the costoclavicular ligament. It is innervated by the supraclavicular nerve and the nerve to subclavius. The scapulothoracic joint is formed by a muscular articulation between the anterior surface of the scapula and the posterior thoracic wall. It derives support primarily from the serratus anterior muscles and also from muscles attaching to the scapula. Let us begin the examination of the shoulder with general observation. Note the symmetry of the bony and soft tissue contours and any evidence of a congenital abnormality like Sprengel's shoulder or scoliosis. Check for a step deformity of the acromioclavicular joint, winging or tilting of the scapulae. Then continue the examination of the shoulder with general palpation. Feel for the presence of abnormal bony contours, possibly from fractures, dislocations or subluxations. Specific palpation can be used to identify dysfunctional structures like the acromioclavicular and sternoclavicular joints, also the clavicles, the sternum, the ribs, the bursi, the anterior part of the capsule, the supraspinatus tendon and the biceps tendon. Palpate the muscles of the suprascapular and periscapular region and the upper extremities note in any wasting or flaccidity. Note any abnormal lumps or lesions and if appropriate palpate the axillary lymph nodes. Continue the examination with active movements. This can be done standing or for an elderly or infirm patient in the seated position. Ask or demonstrate to them how to flex, extend, abduct, adduct, internally and externally rotate the arms. And can I get you to bend your elbows by your side and then rotate them downwards all the way and then upwards as far as you can. That's fine. Any of these movements cause pain? Look for the characteristic patterns of pain related to movement. For example, in subacromial dysfunction or impingement, there will be a painful arc of movement between 60 to 120 degrees of abduction and relatively little discomfort at the start and at the end of the movement. In contrast, in acromioclavicular dysfunction, pain will be most noticeable from about 170 to 180 degrees of abduction or flexion. In adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder, there will be a generalized restriction of most movements, but in particular in abduction and external rotation. For examination of passive movements of the shoulders, it's best to have the patient seated 
to give you the freedom to test all directions. Perform the safe movements as with the active test, but this time ensure that the patient's arm is well supported and relaxed. During these movements, the free hand should be palpating the glenohumeral and acromioclavicular joints. Examine the sternoclavicular joint by placing the patient supine and using the upper extremity as a lever, move the clavicle superiorly, inferiorly, anteriorly and posteriorly. The free hand should be palpating over the joint. Any discomfort or pain? The acromioclavicular joint is examined passively with a similar hold. For all the above movements, ascertain the end of range reached and the presence of pain. For active resisted movements of the shoulder, perform flexion and then push them up and sustain that for a few moments. That's fine. Now, what I like Extension. Bend your elbows there. I'd like you to push them backwards and resist me. That's fine. Fine, thank you. Abduction. Raise them by your sides there and push up and resist me. That's fine. That's Adduction. Fine. Push down now. Fine, thank you. Internal and external rotation. Your palms inwards like that. Note the muscle down. strength, joint stability, the presence of pain or crepitations, and compare with the opposite side. Fine. As the shoulder is one of the most frequently used joints in the body, evaluation with functional movements will enable you to appreciate how any dysfunction influences the patient's everyday activities. Ask the patient to mimic combing the hair, scratching the back, reaching upwards, pushing or pulling an object. In addition, if the patient indicates that a particular daily activity aggravates their symptoms, they should be observed whilst doing that particular movement.